I'm just going to have a chat about trust. Right. Thanks, Chris. Right. So the first entity I'm going to talk about is um, unincorporated trusts. Uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with trusts, um, in particular family trusts, which are very common in New Zealand. Um, so the, the sort of trusts that a, a lot of you will be familiar with is uh, where there are actually named beneficiaries or individuals who are beneficiaries. Uh, but in terms of the catchment groups and other types of organisations, they can have, instead of individual beneficiaries, uh, a purpose uh, for the trust. So uh, in, in the case of your catchment groups, your purpose might be to undertake whatever work it is or, or do the work that you want to do um, for your catchment group. So not individual beneficiaries are a purpose for the trust. So uh, normally you have got a trust deed. Um, you don't have to have a trust deed to establish a trust, but um, certainly it would be recommended and, and that, that would be um, almost universal to have a trust deed. Um, so that's a document that will set out who the trustees are going to be. Um, in this case, what the purpose of the trust is. Uh, and then a lot of provisions about how trustees are appointed and removed, um, the duties of those trustees, um, quite a few provisions there. Um, the applicable law, so we've got a new law that came into effect on the 30th of January last year. That's the Trust Act 2019, and, and some of you may be familiar with that in terms of your individual family trusts. Um, and that is not that that is the main uh, place where we look for trust law now, although there is still a, a lot of case law or judge made law that is still applicable to the running of a trust. <clears throat> so the trustees normally there might be um, or commonly um, for unincorporated trusts, you, you would have at least two. There, there could be one trustee, but Commonly, these two and probably more would be more trustees and that would be appropriate for a catchment group. Um, so there aren't actual individual members like they are in the um, associations that Chris has talked about. Um, that there are beneficiaries. So in the case of your catchment group, your beneficiary is really going to be their purpose rather than individuals. In terms of financing the uh, trust, the unincorporated trust. Um, normally for trust, there's not going to be levies, um, levies on members because there aren't members as such, uh, but the trust may get funding from donations, grants and bequest, bequests. <clears throat> now, one of the um, disadvantages of an unincorporated trust is that um, because it's not a, a separate legal entity, um, the trustees are acting jointly. Uh, and that means that they are personally liable as, as Chris explained with the unincorporated societies. So the trustees are going to be personally liable, although they can, when they're entering into arrangements or contracts, they can limit that liability. Although there are limits on how far they can make that limited liability extend. Um, they can also, um, their trustees who act properly are also entitled to be indemnified from the trust uh, fund if, so long as they're acting properly. Uh, one way to get around or, or uh, avoid that personal liability is to have an actual corporate trustee. And a corporate trustee is, is a company, in other words, so that's a limited liability company. Um, and that means that the, um, the liability of that corporate trustee is limited to the assets of that company. So the, in, so the individual directors or shareholders of that company um, are not going to be personally liable. And there are exceptions there, of course, for company directors who don't act properly. Um, so, yes, yeah, so the benefit of having an unincorporated trust is it can hold assets. So those assets are going to be owned by those individual trustees in their names. Uh, the trustees are in charge of making decisions and administering the trust. Uh, they must, of course, act in accordance with the trust deed and the general law, but, but they have, they're the ones making the decisions. So it's, it's not a democratic 
arrangement like the unincorporated societies or the um, incorporated societies. It's the trustees making decisions but having to comply with the terms of their trustee and the, the Trust Act and the general law relating to trusts. So um, it's not, they're not accountable to the members, although um, there are ways that beneficiaries of their individuals can hold the trustees to account. Um, there is a, because there aren't um, members, say for your catchment groups, if you've got an unincorporated trust, um, and the object of the trust is a, a purpose for your, uh, whatever your catchment group purpose is, uh, and there are not individual beneficiaries who can hold the trustees to account. But the, the um, people interested in their trust uh, still can um, hold those trustees to account because the, the general law um, has the court has a supervisory jurisdiction over how a trust is operated. Um, so trustees, of course, have, have got to they've got their personal liability and they have to bear in mind that people can um, hold them to account if they're not doing the job in accordance with their trust deed or just their general duties under the law. So that's unincorporated trusts.